corner. It's a tad bit late. I'm waiting for the Facebook feed to generate. <laughs> Good back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable Show. It's episode 260. And we've got a little posse here. We've got some possible panelists going to join us as the conversation winds and turns around the stories that I have selected. But we've got a, a really small but powerful panel here, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Firstly, my former co-host and friend, John Locke. I'd like to introduce yourself. Most definitely. My name's John Locke. My business is Lockdown Design and providing SEO for manufacturing and other blue collar firms great and adam fault fault adam fault Ad- oh. it's very german fault it's like a german Bout. first word Bout. 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 sorry sorry um Bout. i'm the uh, lead content writer at blue steel solutions we uh write content design and create websites yeah, apologies. Any kind of foreign word, I always think I should pronounce it the French way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Foo. Adam Foo. 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 Right, after that embarrassment, which I regularly do, <laughs> we're going to go in. Like I say, hopefully some of the posse is going to join us, but, you know, it's up to them. Um, on to story first. It's a quickie. WordPress 4.92 patches. XSS vulnerability. And it, and it solves that. Um, not an earth-breaking story, but I thought we could have a quick delve, you know, increasingly um, to some extent, you know, there's been activity of people buying third-party plugins, third-party themes for the sole purpose of injecting unpleasantness into them. And we had a bit of a discussion with a client yesterday and they kind of they had no idea that, you know, maybe bunning on themes and plugins onto your website without checking them over isn't the most, on their production site, wasn't probably the best idea. So um, do you think this is going to be an increasing scenario? Um, and if so, is there anything that WordPress should do about it? I asked John that first. Well, um, as far as I know, I think in the in the plugin repo, they are evaluating an idea of <clears throat> if things are, you know, dormant for a long enough period of time and nobody's maintaining it, um, either taking it out or contacting the the plugin author to see if somebody else will take it over. Because I th- I think that is a, a strength of of WordPress is the free plugin repo, but it's mm-hmm. A great weakness because a lot of these plugins uh, have to be maintained each time that the version of WordPress bumps up. It, you know, somebody has to uh, also be making sure that it that it still works and making necessary changes. Uh, and what happens is a lot of them they fall. Um, basically, just nobody's maintaining them because they run out of time. Mm-hmm. And then you get the situation where mm-hmm. you know a bunch of you know, amateur users who don't know one plugin from the next are downloading them and then leaving them on the site and then leaving a site up that they don't realize they're paying for every month, you know? And so you get all these opportunities everywhere throughout the community where, you know, it wouldn't even matter that everyone else who knows what they're doing is says avoiding a plugin because all these people have no idea what they're doing are like, yeah, just add it on there and then I'll, Forget I have a website for six months and have this giant beacon out there for everyone to hack. Yeah, um, I just want to say um, we've got another regular joined us, Dr. Evil, because we've got the two Adams. So I'm going to call uh, would Adam has joined us. Would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the listeners? Sure. Hey, guys. Sorry, I am late. Well, I'm always late because my son goes to school and I like to participate in that. Um, but uh, my name's Adam from currently wpcrafter.com although i'm contemplating changing that very soon Ooh. Mm. Ooh. yeah but no we've got no problem you've got to get your parties right adam and i think your son should come first rather than <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i know huh? yes i think you got your parties right but thanks for still coming on the show you're always not very welcome adam um but well, I'm going to call you Dr. Evil during the show, just make it easier for us. Uh, Robert, right. Um, <laughs> I want to ask something about this. You know how at the word camp, um, the state of the word, there was this kind of 
tool that was talked about at the very, not Gutenberg, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the other one. What's it called? Where it's going to kind of scan the uh, plugins in the repo and it's going to tag them if it's PHP, whatever compatible. It's going to start, what's that thing called? You know what I'm talking about, oh, right? Yeah, definitely, but it's totally escaped my mind. I'm wondering if that could be put into something that could kind of spot problems in advance. Because it's, it's, it seems to me like that's probably going to be used as a tool to uh, tag plugins as Gutenberg compatible or not, PHP 7 compatible or not. Um, I'm wondering if that can do like a preliminary scan of plugins, um, machine type of learning stuff. Um, ah, we got to find out the name of that. But when I heard um, uh, that being talked about at the state of the word, I thought this guaranteed is going to be something. There's a bigger purpose behind this uh, product uh, that I'm sure it can find common thread vulnerabilities in plugins because WordPress has to do a much better job of spotting these problems through machine learning. You know, the bigger problem being plugins being sold to nefarious people. Um, it all kind of goes together. So my guess is they're working on some kind of machine learning type of thing. Gosh, whatever it's called, it's like alpha or something. Or yeah, it escapes me. But also um, to be... Um it's also if a WordPress forks, um, it will be opportunity um, if certain people decide that forking it is the best um, way to go. It would be you know, sorting out a better system of, um, of what's not regulation, it's not the word, but a better system that I've discussed during, during the episodes about, you know, a, a, you know, you get check your plugin gets checked over for security. You got to meet a certain standard of maintenance, blah blah blah. And you allow commercial paid plugins into into the system. Um, you're more interested in the quality of the code and uh, blah blah blah. So that might be an opportunity. Um, let, let me add, it's called Tide, and this is how it's oh, described. You know what? I could remember. <laughs> Sorry, it's Tide. Yeah, I think of the soap, the, the clothing soap. Maybe that's why it's Tide, right? Yeah. Because of the clothes washing <laughs> soap. But it says, coming this year, a new program called Tide will run automated tests against every plugin and theme in the directory. This is a way for developers and users to see where plugins and themes need need work. So I guarantee you the bigger plan of this has to be security measures. It has to be. It just has to be. Not just compatibility in Gutenberg. It has to be security. So Dr. Um, e, so Dr. Evil, you think it's a plan for global domination? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> robots. <laughs> yes, robots. Artificial intelligence. There we go. Yeah. Um, I think we move on to the next story. Um, I thought that one was going to be sweet. Um, 12 of the best newsletters to describe, to subscribe to in 2018. Um, I just want to give a brief outline where I would like this, the, our discussion on this particular post to go. Um, basically, what are the newsletters that you uh, are subscribed to that you actually do read on a regular basis? B, do you think... Um, putting all the effort into a newsletter in 2018 for a client is still worth the effort. How important is newsletters, number C, I mean, is in, the, in our climate of social media and everything else that's going on, how important is a successful newsletter to any online business? That's how I would like this conversation the areas to cover and i'll start with adam um you know no not dr evil this, um, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm registering it okay uh, <laughs> all right uh, um, adam um what are some of the newsletters that you still read that regularly come to, to your inbox i like that you make the distinction of still read because i get a million newsletters you know and there's only a handful I still read. Most of it is scanning at this point. And, um, you know, like um, the search engine journal newsletter, I think is one of the main ones that I read. And then um, I can't think of the other one. And then um, uh, copy uh, hackers, I read their stuff. 
So those are kind of the main ones. Um, but I do, I do think that it's still very, very much a thing. Email marketing is very much a thing. Newsletters are very much a thing. And you can't assume a whole lot based on, you know, the limited data you usually get on email newsletters when you're sending them out. Usually all you're getting is, you know, really basic stuff like open rates and, you know, are people clicking stuff, but just, someone might be, you know, might not read your newsletters, anything other than the subject line for the whole year. But, you know, as one of your articles pointed out, um, the Cyber Monday article that you had listed, um, you know, one of the companies on there, all they did was send out a newsletter with an announcement that they had a deal. And you might probably had a good chunk of those people who bought that deal who read nothing but the subject line of that email and deleted a bunch of them all year long and then saw the deal and said, I'd like to, I'm interested in that and, and finally opened an email. So I think that they're very much, um, email newsletters are still very much a, um, a viable tactic in 2018. I think that uh, it can be hard to evaluate them. And I think it's kind of like producing it, uh, just content for your website. It's sort of a long game uh, thing that you're doing there and you can't and you need to be consistently generating newsletters because a lot of it is just you know you're you're um, you're managing leads and you're kind of moving them down the funnel whether but it's just hard to evaluate it a lot of the time yeah I think you brought up some great points there so basically there's the, there's the newsletters well there's three um, buckets isn't it? there's new letters mm -hmm. that you open you skim read but you do that almost every time there's the other bucket bucket where you hope you don't unsubscribe you do might open them you might give them a few seconds to read the headlines mm -hmm. and then there's the third bucket where you've forgotten what you subscribe to because mm -hmm. you you wanted some some um, lead magnet and you, right. just, you as soon as you get the first the first uh <laughs> that you unsubscribe straight away because right. absolutely no interest right. so there's kind of three buckets um john um what are some of the newsletters that you still open and give it more than a, a glance you know what's the some of the stuff that you still read no oh, i definitely uh, like a lot of people i have a ton that i just kind of usually just delete and I should probably unsubscribe from, but the ones that I still read, uh, Jonathan Starks, a newsletter, Kai Davis, uh, Curtis McHale, uh, and then also a Phil Rosex local visibility system, uh, the white spark, uh, roundup. Um, I'm well, sure what, what kind yeah. of stuff, you know, it's, you know, obviously it's linked to your present interests. Yeah. Um, but it, thinking about is there is there any element of a successful newsletter in when it comes to layout and installed that keeps you keeps you open in it do you got any insights maybe about that um no it's not really that i mean because a lot of these are just plain text yeah uh, to, to be honest um mm -hmm. i don't think that the, the layout necessarily makes a big difference um you know maybe um I think the biggest thing is making sure that you have great content that mm -hmm. uh, your target audience is going to be interested in and yeah. just don't publish a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. So a bunch no, of roundup I, stuff. Yeah. Um, I didn't explain myself. I didn't mean in layout in graphic design. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, like, um, do they have like just one main story which they, they delve into detail or is it a spread of little stories with some linkage or is it correct? Is it a mixture with some created um, content, you know, content that they've read and they're giving you a list of links, you know, what's the stuff, what's the kind of format that you find the most appealing? That I'm into. Well, I mean, I can't speak for everyone and other people might be different, but I, I know that, um, some of the ones that I'm subscribed to that are just basically roundups, I don't necessarily read those. I usually just delete those like right away, uh, unless it's somebody that I know personally uh, that, that puts it out. I have one where I'll go through and I'll, I'll find stories uh, that, that I want to check out. But all the rest of them that I have where it's like a roundup of stories, I usually just, just know, okay, this is, I don't have time for this. <laughs> so. Off you go. 
because uh, I think what you're saying is it's got to have um, it's got a to focus. Have, it's got to be focused. Focused, and it's got to have some quality content, and then it might have some creative content mixed in with it. But if it's all just links to other people's stuff, you're just going to ditch it. I think it's really important to have your own voice, and and you know somebody like Adam uh, Fout, he definitely has his own voice. Adam as well, you know, you put out content like all the time. So there's definitely, I, I think having your own voice and, and, and serving your audience is the two biggest things. Yeah. And just make sure you publish, you know, on a semi-regular basis. So Dr. Evil, what do you think? Do, what, what, how do you see the newsletter in 2018? Has it got a future? And which ones do you open and give a quick read of on a regular basis? Well, I don't, I know um, different ways of marketing works differently on different people, different, 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 right? So I'm really immune to a lot of, you know, I'm not, I don't have like a, um, like a consumer mentality. My wife and son, if we're watching TV and there's a Domino's pizza, all of a sudden I have two heads looking at me saying, I want a pizza. You know, (laughs) for me, I don't watch a Domino's pizza commercial and say, I want a pizza or I want to buy that. I can't watch Shark Tank with my wife and son because they'll see a product and they're like on their phones ordering it. And I'm like, no, that's not the point. (laughs) You know, marketing works differently on me. Um, uh, so personally what I find, and I'm kind of like a little on the geeky side, I'm one of those guys that still uses an RSS reader. Most people oh. never even knew, <laughs> don't even know what that, that is. You know, uh, oh, I, so oh I God. find that I write, <laughs> so I find that I have the news way before a newsletter is going to take their time and their effort and send me a newsletter, you know, so I actually don't read any newsletters. I have zero interest in them. Uh, And I think in a lot of cases, the juice might not be worth the squeeze, but it depends on who your audience is. So if you have an audience that might be um, really busy people, they appreciate you compiling something for them. I personally think the juice is not worth the squeeze. The only type of newsletter-ish email that I'm really interested in is when I care about someone and it's an individual or maybe a business and they're giving me an update of what's going on with them or something like that. Those, I will read every single word, you know, if it's not, they're just trying to market something, but I'm really genuinely interested in them. So I know for me, I don't send regular newsletters because I'm not that newsworthy. Um, But every three or four months, I'll send something and I'll tell them what's going on with me personally um uh last year um uh in around uh, march my grandmother passed away and i actually sent a newsletter and i was t- giving people updates and at the end i i talked about how my grandmother passed away um and people really appreciated that because i'm building a relation i really care about the people i send this to they're not a number in a newsletter list i'm giving them personal information uh, because i have a relationship with them i care about them and they care about me so those are the types of things i will read every single word of i think you put some great points there adam um you know dr evil kind of um really um had some really interesting points there because um you don't have to actually send it out every month really do you adam but you know there's different ways of approaching this isn't there yeah, they're sure. They're sure. Why? <laughs> yeah, there... I wasn't talking to you, Adam Evil. <laughs> I was talking oh, to... oh, I, I got it. I, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Go on. All right, then. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think the different audiences and different content is the key here. You know, there are some people who are just going to love those curated lists and are going to dive right into them. Like, and like Adam said, no idea what an RSS feed is. And, you know, that's how they get their, their information. There are going to be people who, I mean, I have a bunch of newsletters that I'm subscribed to that are just for, um, I'm just looking for deals and for information about concerts and live music, you know, and, I read these things, um, you know, in seconds, but anytime there's a deal that's, that's available or a lot of it is just like, this is what's a bit, what's, you know, playing in Dallas. Now I know where the, you know, that's how I get my information on, on concerts. So I think it really depends on what people are looking for on. It depends on the, 
um, you know, the, the rapport that you've established with your audience, because, you know, in, in uh, Dr. Evil's case, you know, he has an audience that, you know, he has set up a specific rapport and he has set up, you know, this is the kind of, I'm not going to give you a bunch of crap that you don't want. I'm just going to tell you about me every now and then. And there, I am quite sure there are people who very much appreciate that and see that as a breath of fresh air. And there are going to be other pe- members of other audiences that just aren't interested in that kind of personal stuff and who are only interested in joining a newsletter because they want certain pieces of information that only you can provide. So I think that, you know, you, it really does come down to getting to know your audience as much as you can and trying to provide what they want, whatever that happens to be. I, I think the key word, I, I think it's been a great conversation because I think it's pointed out that the world of newsletters is quite diverse now. Yes. And, you know, the kind of newsletter, and I think the key word from all the panel is it's got to have value, value in some way, that intellectual value, value in offers, it's got to have some value, value either per, it personally touches the audience, value in the offer, if it's kind of offer-based newsletter, mm-hmm. or value in actual content, actual knowledge that's being shared. But I think the key word in 2018, probably always, but but now in a much more competitive landscape, is it's got to have clear value to its target audience. But how that value is... Um, transcribed can vary enormously depending on the audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And as John said, you got to have a strong voice too, because like you said, there's there's a million newsletters out there, and it's so easy to unsubscribe if you know something is is not. Precise. Well, some of them, some of them are, some of them. Are. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. It ought to. Be. In most cases. It is. You're right, though. There's some newsletter I keep getting from, um, I, I'm not going to say their name, but I'm getting, starting to get annoyed. I'm like, you people, I do not want, I don't know how many times I have to click unsubscribe. It's the fourth <laughs> time you've unsubscribed and you're still <laughs> sending it to me. I know, right? Yeah, that's right. I think we're going to go for a break, folks. When we come back, we've got a couple of other stories. Um, we might throw in one that I was going to. Um, be part of next week's we'll see how the conversation goes we'll be back in a few moments folks we're coming back and I've just remembered in the excitement of getting this podcast I haven't mentioned our uh, sponsor but kind of mixing up where I talk about our sponsors might be a good idea anyway and our sponsor for this episode is Intelligence WP and what is Intelligent WP you you are saying well, it helps you with Google Analytics. Yes, you know, you set it up for yourself or for a client and you might forget about it or you need something that can get more information from this amazing platform. And that's what Dub Intelligence WP does for you. It puts your Google Analytics literally on steroids. Now, if that sounds really interesting, the other great thing is it's free. And they do have packages where you pay for training and additional support, but the actual plugin is not crippled. It's totally functional and it's quite amazing. So if that's interesting, go to Intelligence WP, download it, install it, and I think you'll be quite amazed. On to our next news story. (sighs) Right. Black Friday, Cyber Monday generates huge revenue spikes for <laughs> WordPress products. Here's why and how. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody want to? St- well, um, uh, anybody want to start with that one? I, I think it's. Sure. Uh, you- oh, go ahead, Adam. Oh, please jump in. I've been talking too much, John. Oh, okay. Well, I I just think it's, you know, it's like anything else. Uh, people know uh, Christmas is uh, rolling around, Black Friday. It's it's time to go spend money. Mm-hmm. So I, I think the plug-in and theme space is really no different. I think people kind of gear up for that. They expect all these companies to bombard them with, uh, you know, sales sales emails. Black Friday sale. Mm-hmm. Friday, so. Monday. Four weeks of sales. No, but um, well, I've, I chose this one because I, I thought it was in some ways a good news um, article. It just shows that people, some people are doing really well with the WordPress 
Ian Fireman is <laughs> to the gloom, you know, darkness of the end of WordPress. Um, but in general, uh, panel, um, do you think those those kind of two weeks, bef- you know, around Thanksgiving to the end of Christmas, do you think it's historically in, in a lot of industries it's been a you know really the driver of their of their turnover for almost the whole year but do you think for kind of digital products it's getting a bit like that as well it's a it, those two weeks are a real important part what's the panel thing you're looking at me like i'm talking crap folks i'll, sh- I'll share some <laughs> insight uh you know i don't uh Okay, yeah, I'll share some insight here because um, part of, I think out of everyone that's on this podcast right now, um, I'm probably the one that's the most involved in something called affiliate marketing or referral marketing. And I'll tell you, uh, for the, uh, the Black Friday period of time, so it was that Monday before Thanksgiving all the way to the Monday of Cyber Monday, I put a live chat on my website uh, because people go there and they ask me questions about, you know, help me decide between this and this. And I have an incentive to help them. I would help them anyway without the incentive, uh, but I have an incentive to help them. And I can tell you over that period of time, I must have had like 300 live chats. Mm. Um, So I'm sitting there, I'm on my iPhone. I'm like, honey, I need to do this right now. And I will say when I look back and I saw all that people had purchased just through like links on my website, I was kind of shocked. I mean, I wasn't, like I didn't realize the power of (laughs) Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. And there were some people that would uh, hit me up on Facebook and Facebook Messenger and they would literally buy anything. Oh, do you think I would need this at some point or would I need this at some point? And I'm like, if you want it, you know, uh, you could do that or there's this free option. And I'm like sitting there shocked because I never shop like that. You know, I, uh, so what happens is um, the amount of the discount uh, that you offer each time you go higher and higher will unlock more and more purchases. It's almost like a video game <laughs> because at a certain discount rate, people are going to buy whether they have any plans of using it. It's now let me buy it just in case I might use it so I won't regret it later. And I was actually very surprised by that. (laughs) And, you know, um, I think that if you're selling something in the WordPress space or any space, there's that, do you discount it? Because now you're training people to wait. You're training people to hold back their purchase. Um, Or do you just go ahead and do it because you're going to get people to buy it that probably wouldn't buy it without the discount. Mm -hmm. So you really have to weigh that. And there's another company um, that, um, great company, Thrive Themes. Okay, they have Thrive Architect. They have this great suite of plugins and themes. They have a no Black Friday sale policy that they enforce every single year. They will not discount their products ever and when uh, this year they actually said how much money they made during the break because they gave half of it to charity instead of like as a discount to people and I'm like dang that number would have been 10 times greater if you would have actually had a sale that's what was I mean I was thinking of reaching out to them saying you might want to reconsider this Mm. uh, because there is a huge revenue potentials for you so, uh, you know, there's, it's, it's all a double-edged sword, but that was my personal experience over the break. If you're selling uh, WordPress products, you could get anywhere between uh, three to six times more revenue in that period than you would in a typical month. Yeah, it's, um, it's, you, you, we're covering a lot of stuff here, folks, and it's fantastic, but you've brought up a lot of um, different subjects here because, like you say, Fry Themes is such a diverse um, how people approach this because it's linked to our previous conversation last week uh, around Pip and Williams and, and his decisions because it's such a diverse landscape. Like, you've got Fry Themes. Um, I think sometimes they do do special offers, but they're adamant. They don't do the Black Friday, Cyber Monday game. Um, there's other people that have 
published lately that offering discounts is really damaging and they get spikes and then they're not getting any extra revenue when they look at the figures for the whole year. And then you have companies like iThemes. I think iThemes is the kind of extreme of what, you know, they they constantly sending out special offers, you know. <laughs> it's like, annoying, actually, uh, <laughs> to me anyhow, sorry. Um, yeah, I can see where you're coming from there. To me, I, I just wait for the best special offer, but I don't buy anything <laughs> from iThemes unless a special offer comes my way. Yeah. Because unless... Um, or I do exactly what you said, Adam from WP Crafter, um, is that I, I postponed the purchase until um, I bought some more licenses for one of their products this week because they sent um, a 10 year and it covered a product that wasn't normally covered by their um, other discount offerings. And I thought, I'll oh, snag that. And I, I got a third <laughs> off. Um, so. Um, it's such a diverse thing. What do you think, John? Do you think, is it like a bit like the newsletters? You know, there is no black and white about this. It just really varies with case to case, really. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it varies um, like how often you should be trying to sell. I mean, I, I think ideally like everything shouldn't, you know, not every communication should be selling. Uh, I, I think if finding the right mix to like education and, and selling, uh, it, it makes for a good newsletter. You got to put stuff in the, in the bank with your customer before you try and extract with asking. So. I think, I think, I think having a good, you know, having, if you're going to do a special offer, it should be a really good one. Um, I think that's the key because you know it's a bit like the newsletter that we were discussing in the first part of um, the show um, is it's got to offer real value um, I you know I think people that kind of send out a newsletter and they're offering 10% um, I don't think that's going to get a lot unless it's a very high ticketed um, very like uh, almost like an Apple product, which you, you know, practically mm -hmm. to try and find a legitimate discount on that Apple product. Good luck to you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, <clears throat> the consumer is so bombarded now with advertising and offers that ten percent. I don't think it's going to get the juices really going. Really, so <laughs> if you're going to make an offer, it's got to be a, a sizable one. Mm -hmm. And but on the other hand, I don't. I just feel that I theme sometimes overdo it a bit, you know, it gets to the stage where like, like that it is annoying, you know, they, they literally there's so many special offers going around. You, you, your head could almost spin. Well, do you think I've been a bit harsh there? It, and that's one of the newsletters I unsubscribed. Like you give me your email every three days, you're getting an email uh, saying 10%, 20%, 30%, 10%, 15%. It's like, dude, <laughs> and unsubscribe. It sets, a, it sets a bad example because now, yeah. like you said, it's like, okay, now I'm just going to wait until it's like 50% or 70%. You got to be yeah. careful with that stuff. <laughs> I'm going to have to back off here because it looks like we're having a go at iThemes, but I'm not really, because I use, um, I wouldn't say all their products are fantastic, you know, but they have got a couple key products that I use for myself and for my clients mm -hmm. on the maintenance side. And they're, they're really a bedrock of, um, of the suite of plugins that I use for security and backup. Mm -hmm. There's a couple... There's a couple, they've got superb, couple superb products in their yeah. portfolio. Um, and I, in general, I think they're a great company. But I do wonder, you know, um, I get the, they've been in the game of WordPress for a long time. And Corey, he's no idiot. Um, I've tried to get him on the show for the interview. I'm going to have to retry my efforts and see if he will come on. Um, and they're a great team, and they've been part of the WordPress community. Um, so they, uh, what I'm getting to is they must be data. I would imagine they're pretty much data-driven. So when they look at the data, this mythology of marketing must be working for them, doesn't it? Well, and that's a good point. I mean, you got like, um, like when you look at Steam and the, the games that they sell on Steam, everything is on sale constantly. You know, they have constant sales and there's this 
I for, I forget how if it was an actual study that Steam did or if someone else went in and did it, but they found that basically they can reduce price infinitely to almost to free, and there will and they will always get more money for the deeper their discounts go. And so you get these crazy discounts; they're like ninety percent off, or you know, like ninety five percent off. And I, every time I see it, I know they're doing it because it's working. You know, because they have these constant, constant discounts all the time for anything you can imagine. And the discounts are, are in some cases absurd. You know, you're going from $20 to $2 for a game. And you think to yourself, how could they be making money off this? But they, they know, you know that they are, you know. So I'm sure this is working well for, um, you know, for I think. And yeah. here's some of the situations where I think it's actually – you really should be doing a discount if you're in the WordPress ecosystem. Uh, number one, if you don't if you don't sell lifetime licenses, so if there's an annual renewal fee for support and, mm. and maintenance, now you're you're feeding in because that you don't discount. You just discount the initial purchase. So then you have uh, you know a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Mm. There, um, if you have a tight system of automatic renewals and you could get the person to actually use the software. So that's number one. Number two, if you're, say, the case of Elementor, Elementor gave a 25% discount. It drove massive, massive sales. Um, obviously, I don't know what their true sales numbers are. I only know what I see um, that, you know, Anyways, um, and so the benefit for Elementor is this. Number one, you don't do the lifetime license with them. I already talked about that. But it's if you have a plugin or theme that's in the repo where you're, what you're selling actually is like a tag along for it, meaning it doesn't replace it. It just goes with it. Perfect example, Elementor. Elementor Pro is an add-on to Elementor. Elementor, you have these active install numbers. So you, if you have a plugin or theme in the repo, your, your goal is to drive those active mm. install numbers because that is directory SEO. You have to get yeah. that number increasing. So if you can discount it, and you're getting those numbers up, 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 and you're driving growth so fast that whenever someone looks at the popular list of themes, you're in that top 10, mm -hmm. it benefits you. There's those intrinsic benefits, right? It's going to drive straight up sales. Yeah. Um, so there's those situations like that. Now, a lot of plugin and theme developers are not really marketers, so they didn't plan their product that way, but they really should have, you right. know, to have a directory <laughs> component with an upsell. Uh, anyways. Well, they're not the most successful um, plugins that use the, the the directory, and you know that that has been their one of their key strategies, hasn't it? Uh, the smart ones, yes. Hmm. Um, uh, I slightly disagree with that remark. I, I think um, <laughs> what I mean by that um, is that you know it's not totally black and white. There are some scenarios where maybe because of the plugin and the business model that that isn't especially it's a very niche plugin obviously yeah. that 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 scenario isn't exactly going to work very well for you so it's, that's it's, true that's actually very true if your numbers are going to be low because it's so niche it's yeah. going to just reflect bad you're absolutely right there are situations where you don't want that number out there that's what you're saying yeah, and also, you know, you, it might be niche, so you're not going to get hundreds of thousands, but for your niche market, it might be a plugin that's really, really of value, mm. you know, that really solves a particular business problem. Mm. So you can actually charge quite, uh, you know, in general, I, I think, you know, it depends on the quality of plugin, you know, of that. There's a lot of plugins and I don't precisely do much, but there are other plugins that really solve a particular niche problem for a particular type of client. Mm -hmm. And it's never going to be in the hundreds of thousands, but really you should charge a lot more um, because it really helps with that niche problem. Does that make any sense, actually? <laughs> yeah, you're not doing so. I'll take that. I was, I was <laughs> so upset. <laughs> I have been noted to go on a kind of winding path, haven't I, John? Yeah, you're muted. Good. <laughs> Sometimes. No, but it makes sense. Everything everything makes sense. Yeah. 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 
it's just that you know um i'm always uh, as i get slightly older i'm always very suspicious of people that kind of say there is only one path one way to go because I, what yeah. i've learned is there, there there's a lot of factors and um if that was the case in business you could write you could write just a kind of um one of these training books and say you know and some do don't they they say well follow this book and it's guaranteed for business success you know and as soon as you see that in the title you know it's shit don't you <laughs> <laughs> because if there was a like a it was like a scientific experiment you know you do a b c d to d um uh, business would be easy but nothing yeah. could be further from the truth isn't it you know um so that's me going on a little rant isn't it <laughs> there, there we go um i think we're gonna wrap it up actually because um i was tempted to go into the delicious mind um article but i'm gonna I'm going to leave that to next week, but I thought I'd just to get your get the listeners and watch us salivating. I thought, I thought I'd just mention it is that we're probably going to be discussing is Gutenberg the end of the new beginning for WordPress um, yeah. on the Delicious Brains website. It's a delicious article of, <laughs> of great subversion. Uh, and I, uh, I'm going to try and get the author to come on um, either next Friday or maybe uh, another episode. Um, because I thought it was a well-written article, and I'd say deeply subversive against the establishment, <laughs> uh, which I love, because I'm deeply subversive in my nature anyway. <laughs> uh, um, so there we go. Um, I'm going to let the posse... Uh, first of all, panel, I thought it's been a great show. We have covered a lot of territory in this episode, haven't we? And I think people, if you're trying to market something or you're thinking you really want to listen to this a couple of times because i think we've got some great stuff here so adam from wp crafter would you like to tell the folks how they can learn more about you and what you're up to yes so um adam at wpcrafter.com however if i change my website address i'll make sure to put a redirect and send you to the right place (laughs) <laughs> what are you up to anything lately <laughs> what's that <laughs> anything lately that you're up to <laughs> not really no oh, right. yeah, well, i'm actually constantly putting uh new videos on my uh youtube channel right there uh wp youtube.com slash wp crafter but i didn't want to say that because if i change my channel it's not going to be slash wp crafter anymore and i can't put a redirect on youtube <laughs> yeah what we have to do in maybe a coming up episode um see if you can kind of say you definitely come on but i think we should have a discussion about a story around youtube and how you, how youtube in the kind of online marketing world is you know be getting more and more important in a way i think that'd be interesting now, the other adam how can that how can people get hold of you adam uh just blue steel tx on twitter um and then adamfout.com yeah, and you post some great stuff if you're um, going to have a read and learn more. And John, how can people find out more about what you are, are up to? You can find me at my website, which is LockdownDesign.com. And uh, on Facebook, I'm also Lockdown Design. Look for me on LinkedIn. I'm there too. So Yeah, I really liked your little article about, you know, if you get punched in the face – you just got to get back up again. And, uh, um, and yeah, I think you, you, you said you literally have been touched in the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but that's something um, as an entrepreneur or uh, agency owner or, or any business you've got to be aware of, haven't you, John, is that, you know. It's it's not going to be all sunshine and roses. It's it's There's going to be struggles and you just got to persevere. That's basically yeah. it. Yeah, you really got to. So I thought that was a great little article. So go to uh, John's site, and he's got some great stuff on there. Um, how to get hold of me, folks? It's really easy. And get me on my Twitter feed at Jonathan Denwood. Um, go to the Facebook page, uh, or just email me. Um, just to wrap up the show, um, if you've got an article that you want to promote, a product, a WordPress product, a service, you're doing a presentation at an upcoming 
WordCamp and you want to promote it, um, you can come on the Friday show as one of our guest panelists, and you can uh, we'll discuss the article, whatever you're thinking. There is a form on the Friday shows in the footer of the WP Tonic website on and on every Friday show show notes. There's also will be a, the form which you can fill in um, and then I can have a chat with you and then you probably will be able to come on the Friday show and be part of the panel. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be fun, would it? Uh, um, I can not pronounce your name correctly. That'd be great, wouldn't it? You know, that'd be <laughs> fabulous, wouldn't it? But there we go. Uh, um, Thanks, folks. I think we're going to wrap it up now, and I've really enjoyed this discussion, as I normally do, and we'll see you next week, folks. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Oops.